Gee, thanks. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, thanks. Uh, thank you all for joining in. Um, if you could just let the people in. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good, in, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll get started right away. Uh, JP will lead us in a time of worship. Uh, JP, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I just want to read uh, from Psalms 116, verse 12, even as we get started. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Tonight, even as we come before the presence of the Lord, let's focus on Him, His love. Ah, sorry, that was uh, Psalms 116, verse 12. Um, thank you, Jesus. For all the blessings that we have received, can we just take some time to praise His name? He has been so good to us, isn't it? For all the blessings that we cannot even see, let's tell Him, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. you today and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you Lord thank you Lord for all you've given to me for all the blessings that I cannot see Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an heart stretched out, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done in my life. You took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you. took my sin and my shame yes lord you took my sickness and healed all my pain thank you lord thank you lord let's sing it out with a grateful heart with a grateful heart with a song of praise with an heart stretched out I will bless your name, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an ostrich down, I will bless your name one more time. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an ostrich down, 
I will bless your name. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just wanna thank you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Let me take a few moments just to praise His name. What can we bring to? The presence of the Lord. All our praises, all our thanksgiving, all our gratitude. Let's bring it before the Lord this evening. He is here with us and He deserves all the praises. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name, oh, with a grateful heart. With a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless you, sing that again. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You have a heart, you have our attention tonight. All our love, all our heart belongs to you. You have my love, you have my heart. I give it all to you, I give it all to you. You have my love, you have my heart I give it all to you I give it all to you you have my love you have my heart I give it all to you I give it all to you you have my love you have my heart, I give it all to you, I give it all to you. You are the one that I hold on to, you are my love, Jesus. One that I hold on to, you are my love, Jesus. You are the one that I hold on to, you are my love, Jesus. I give it all 
to you. I give it all to you. You have my love. You have my heart. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. I give my heart to you I give my love to you And shepherd of my soul I give you full control Wherever you may lead I will follow I have made the choice To listen for your voice Wherever you may lead I will go Shepherd of my soul Shepherd of my soul I give you full control Wherever you may lead I will follow I have made the choice To listen for your voice Wherever you may lead I will go Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream the shepherd of my soul is by my side should i face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my guide be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream the shepherd of my soul is by my side should i face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my guide The shepherd of my soul will be my guide The shepherd of my soul will be my guide Lord, we are willing to listen to you We are ready to receive your voice, O oh God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you alone are the one that we hold on to. We ask, O oh God, that you lead us, Jesus. Sorry for the times that we neglected your voice, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you consume us with your love. You consume us with your affection, Lord. Can we sing the chorus? Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain? Or a valley dark and deep The shepherd of my soul will be my guide The shepherd of my soul will be my guide The shepherd of my soul will be my guide Thank you, Jesus.
So Father, we we thank you, Father, that you are our shepherd, that you lead us, that you guide us. Father, we submit this time into your hands. Uh, we ask of you to come and continue to lead us um, this time, Father, this hour. We set aside, um, we lay aside every other distraction, every worry, every anxiety, every thought, every worry of tomorrow. Father, we set it aside. And we want to lean in, Father. We want to lean in to hear your voice. Lord, we submit and surrender the word. We lift it up to you, Holy Spirit. You come and breathe over your word. Let it come to life. Let it bring our spirits to life. Let it pierce our hearts. Speak to us, Jesus. Speak to us, Father, because your word is prophetic in nature, God. So we submit ourselves before you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, everybody. Thank you all once again for uh, joining us, uh, taking its time off on a Friday evening. Um, it's wonderful to see um, all of you. Um, hey, if you believe that you are not attending this meeting by accident, um, give an amen. Okay. You're not here by accident. I want you to know that. Right? Um, amen. 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 Okay. Awesome. 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 How many of you all are excited to uh, learn from the Word of God? Not to hear from me, but learn from the Word of God. Amen. I am... Um, I'm excited to share, um, you know, what I've been learning, uh, what God's been teaching me. So what you're about to hear tonight is really what God's been teaching me, um, you know, what he's been ministering to me personally. Um, and I thought it's, it's best that I also share it with you. So uh, I hope um, and, and I believe that this word will bless you as we, as we um, you know, learn. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we were supposed to finish this series, Psalm 23, last month on May the 14th, I think. We started, a uh, part one of this was on May 7th, and um, there was unavoidable circumstances. Uh, my sister got, uh, you know, infected with, uh, with COVID, and she was hospitalized, and uh, I had to be there, and uh, thankful to JP, now, you know, who stepped in the last minute and did that session. And then, uh, yeah, and things happen. And so here we are, <laughs> the following month, to kind of conclude. I want to conclude this psalm because uh, I don't want to prolong it any longer. So here we are. Um, so in part one, um, if you uh, if you did not attend that session, uh, we laid the foundation of who wrote the psalm. Uh, the man behind the text is what we looked at. It was an introduction. We saw very briefly the life of David. Uh, we went through his entire uh, you know, life, basically, in uh, 10 minutes, which is not fair. But <laughs> uh, we saw him from a shepherd boy um, to the time he became a king and how he was chased by Saul um, and by his own son. Um, and, and we also saw, and we kind of concluded by saying that he's probably the historians say that he is probably writing the psalm, Psalm 23, um, in, in his latter part of his kingly days, uh, right? Um, so, and why did we want? Why did I want to do that? As in, why did we want to see the man behind the text? Is uh, you know, we uh, I gave this example of uh, you know, I believe your word. When we look at a friend and say, uh, you know, much I believe what you say. You know, I didn't. I know that you didn't mean that. Um, you know, so there is this sense of credibility or value that comes from a certain person's um, mouth, right, or tongue. We, we take their word. Um, so, I mean, that's why I wanted to lay the foundation. Even before we get into Psalm 23, we wanted to understand who is writing Psalm 23. Uh, Psalm of David. So that's what we looked at in the last session. And um, if you want to, it's uploaded on YouTube. Um, you know, please uh, have a listen to it. Okay, so today let's get started. Uh, um, 
Okay, where's my notes? Okay, there it is. All right, Psalm 23. Um, I hope you all can see. Uh, verse 1. Uh, just to recap, we did verse 1 in the last session, but let's do a quick recap. Okay, we see that uh, he starts off by saying, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord. Okay, we can just look for, or we can just study word for word the Lord, Yahweh, the Ancient of Days, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the ever, from everlasting to everlasting. He is God, Yahweh, Jehovah. David says, He is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And we very briefly saw that, that this imagery uh, or the title of a shepherd uh, given to the Lord, uh, given to God in the Old Testament was, is not a new thing. And we saw a bunch of scriptures that, uh, you know, that, that refers to God as a shepherd of Israel. But here, David, uh, like he always does, you know, in the Old Testament, the people of Israel always refer to God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And David comes into the scene and he says, God, you are my God. He is known to personalize things. He is known to stir the pot, so to say. Right? And here he comes and says, the Lord is my shepherd. And we see that the Lord is a shepherd. He sustains. And the good shepherd, he cares. Okay? And I mentioned that David, um, he, you know, himself, he was, a sh uh, he was a keeper of a sheep. He was a shepherd. He understood both the needs of the sheep and the cares of of the shepherd so he compares himself to um, this creature that is weak that is actually basically um, very stupid very foolish and he takes God to be his provider his uh, you know his preserver his director his everything and another important thing to note here is uh, the sheep was an object of property it was not a random wild animal, you know, like a dog or something. The sheep was a property. That means a shepherd had to buy it with a price. Okay, you see where I'm getting with this? Okay, David kind of has this revelation that he was bought with a price. He was redeemed with something. When Israel says that the Lord was a the Lord is our shepherd, he guided us as a shepherd in the desert, they were saying god redeemed us from egypt that's exactly what is happening right so sheep was was an object of uh, of property it had value it was bought with a with a great price um and so we see that jesus again we saw this in the last session but just a, another quick recap we see that jesus he is the great shepherd he is the chief shepherd he is the savior shepherd he is the good shepherd in john 10. um okay so uh, let's move on um, I shall not want, David says, or I shall lack, I shall not lack, or I have all that I need in different translations, that's what it says. And we again saw that uh, David says, I shall not want both as a declaration and as a decision. I shall not want means all my needs are supplied by the Lord. Okay, all my needs are supplied by the Lord. Okay, so with your mics muted, wherever you are, I can't see you because... I want you to say this, that line, all my needs are supplied by the Lord, my shepherd. Okay, I'm believing you said it. Okay, let's say it again. All my needs are supplied by the Lord, my shepherd. Okay, personalize it and say, say it, you know, say it with conviction. Say my shepherd. Okay, and the second point we see that I shall not want means I decide to not desire more than what the Lord, my shepherd, gives. I decide to not desire more than what the Lord, my shepherd, gives. Okay, let's move on. So we see that I shall not want or I lack nothing. We see that in Philippians 4.19. Uh, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Okay, um, I'd, I'd encourage you to get this book by Philip Keller. 
um, a sh it, it's called a shepherd looks a shepherd's look at Psalm 23 um, and from that book uh, you know I got these points from there <clears throat> he says uh, the sheep first point okay the sheep do not lie down easily and will not unless four conditions are met okay the sheep will not lie down very easily until four conditions are met and what are they first one uh, because they are timid they will not lie down if they are afraid and because they are social animals they will not lie down if there is a friction among the sheep if flies or parasites trouble them they will not lie down finally if sheep are anxious about food or hungry they will not lie down i'm sure we can all associate with at least one of those points right rest comes because the shepherd has dealt with the fear friction flies you know in our context to be distractions anxiety and famine rest comes because the shepherd has dealt with your fear your frictions your distractions your anxiety uh, and your need your hunger your thirst okay so he makes us to lie down that's first that's the first half right and the second uh, half says in green pastures in green pastures um, now when we say when we when we see that uh, when we read those words green pastures this is the image that comes to our head isn't it uh, this beautiful lush green mountains you know the swiss alps and the sheep um, you know at least i had this imagery because uh, i um, in during my school days uh, there was this cartoon called heidi uh, that used to come and i, I would watch heidi okay, it was fun i'm not sure if anybody knows that cartoon uh but i mean the imagery was again you know she was living a small little girl living up in uh, the swiss alps um you know with lush green mountains through the year and uh, you know and the sheep uh you know being taken up the mountains to feed to be fed um you know <laughs> uh right but this is the image we get but what we forget is this is the actual terrain of the Middle East region. This is the Judean desert. This is like the image of the Judean desert. Wow. And now another thing that you yeah, we need to learn we need to know about this region is that this region has rainfall only twice a year. So between the months of December, Jan, and I think early Feb there is a little bit of lush uh, there's you know green pastures but for the rest of the nine or even ten months um, this is what it looks like it's wilderness it's desert uh, and then the psalmist says green pastures uh, and i was you know studying uh, you know just get, learning more about this uh, about this terrain um, you see these uh, you see this small rocks and these small grasses right so what happens is uh, these um, moist air the wind that comes from the, the mediterranean ocean the sea from the west it, uh, it kind of hits the rock over the evening and the humidity increases and early morning you have you find these dews that kind of you know droplets that slide down the rock um, and that helps in growing these small grass kind of a thing and this is what they know, they call it as green pastures. That means the sheep have just enough of what they need. The sheep didn't need to know where the green pastures or still waters were, you know. Um, and all, all he needed to know was where the shepherd was the shepherd would guide the sheep to what he needed you know uh five minutes or ten minutes from now the sheep is again dependent on the shepherd uh how many of us know what's going to happen in the next five minutes next five seconds um we don't but then 
there's some beauty in complete 100% surrender not knowing what's going to happen but i'm going to trust the shepherd i don't know where my next uh, provision is going to come from but i'm going to trust the shepherd because he knows where you know where the green pastures are he knows where the still waters are um he makes me to lie down uh he puts us to sleep you know uh makes us to lie down that's what it is uh he wants us to rest uh god put adam to sleep and uh leonard sweet he says god did his most magnificent work while adam was asleep uh, when man rests god works amen when man rests god works um you know that's why he leads us he makes us to lie down he wants us to rest in by the, by green pastures when you see that uh, in the example of mary and martha as well right um cuz our mind uh most often known as the the monkey mind the monkey brain you know uh, can can be sometimes like that we are restless like a martha we can be running around helter skelter you know and not knowing what to do jumping from one branch to another worrying about our past worrying about our present worrying about our future sometimes worrying about all three of them to at once uh, but then jesus comes and says is like shh you know just rest rest be calm be calm i will give you rest uh, he says okay so he makes us lie down and and i just want to go back quickly to this wilderness and you look at this wilderness and you see that there is no shade when you look at from the birds i view you you're like where is the provision where is the green pastures where where is the oasis uh where is the shade shelter i am exposed the wilderness is known as area of uncertainty anything can attack us from any side but the beauty is when the lord is your shepherd you won't be looking at what you don't have but what you do have jesus who's the good shepherd and that's why david says he the lord is my shepherd he knows where the green pastures are he knows where the shade is he knows where the shelter is he knows where the still waters are so i'm not going to look at the things i don't have i'm not going to look at everything all the troubles and sorrows but i'm going to look at the one i do have and he's all i need and that is jesus and remember david is writing this while he was a king and as a king he could have had he can have anything he wants isn't it he can have whatever he needs whatever he wants but then he says the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want anything in him it doesn't depend on my title as a king amen amen let's move on um are you guys with me uh you learning something okay okay someone more than one person if they say yes means i'll also be happy <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's let's just move on. Thanks guys. Thanks for being nice and responding. <laughs> Verse 3. Okay, we see he restores my soul. Okay, everybody say that. He restores my soul. Say it again. He restores my soul. Okay? Now, another point that I just want to make here is uh although we have the scriptures now verse-wise, okay, verse 1 verse to verse 3. Uh, you sh- you should know that david did not write the psalm uh, in verses okay I, we got these verses only a couple of hundreds few hundreds of years ago okay uh it's a continuation okay he makes us lie down in green pastures uh he restores my soul david goes on to say that he brings us to a place of restoration okay he brings us to a place of restoration okay um i learned something on netflix okay just so you know everything is not spiritual okay i learned that the word restaurant uh in its root meaning means a place of restoration so people would go to this place to be restored that was known as a restaurant <laughs> uh we use restaurant for everything now isn't it uh but that's is i mean I, i just found it beautiful um he 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 brings us to a place 
he restores us. And the place is green pastures, uh, you know, still waters. And the leadership of the shepherd did not only comfort and restore the sheep, he also guides him into righteousness. Okay, the second half of the verse says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I want to talk about the last half uh, of this verse and then about the middle section, okay? Uh, for his name's sake. That means the reputation in their culture, okay, in the Middle Eastern culture of every shepherd, the reputation of a shepherd was based or dependent on how well the shepherd knew the wilderness or the terrain. He was expected to know, uh, you know, where uh, the terrain really well. Um, and that's why he says, for his name's sake. And so, again, we see God, he just know he, he knows everything inside out. Obviously, he is God. And then we see that he leads me in the paths of righteousness, right? Um, next slide. He leads us in the past. So again, you know, going, uh, a lot of it is going to, uh, you know, be trying understanding, you know, from, from the Middle Eastern's point of view, from their culture, okay? Now, you see this hill and you see these tracks kind of a thing, right? Now, all of that is made by the sheep walking. It, those are all trails for the flock to walk. Okay, and it's been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. It goes back for as long as there's been shepherds, you know, from to the Abraham's times and even even further back, maybe. Okay. Um, and you see this picture. What are those? You, know, you might you wonder what those sheep are eating. Uh, are they rock eating sheep or what? You know, it's but. Again, the shepherd knows. Um, and we see that, okay, so he leads us in paths of righteousness. Okay, you see this terrain, how narrow they are. Okay, now see, like, uh, you know, I've mentioned this point before, the sheep are very foolish. They had to be led from point A to point B to point C in a, you know, in a very linear pattern. Okay, so for example, between point A and point B, if there is a stream, if the shepherd was at point B, and the sheep where the flock was here and if the shepherd called them they would just come straight without even noticing that there's a stream and they were not realizing that the sheep, the stream can be dangerous they would go into the water they would even sink you know and, and drown and die but what the shepherd does is knowing that there's a stream he will take them around the stream from point a to point b to point c around the stream and the sheep will follow uh, that's, that's the nature of the sheep and the goats are not like that. Goats are a little bit kind of a rebellious kind. You're like, yeah, I'll just find my own way. I'll, I'll go my own way. You know, that's, that's the kind of attitude they have. Okay, uh, let's move on. So we see that in Matthew 7, 13. Okay, this scripture came to my mind, uh, you know, when I, when, I got, uh, when I was preparing. Enter by the narrow gate. Okay, you see how narrow those trails were. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. If the sheep didn't follow that pattern, if the sheep didn't follow that path, if they didn't follow the shepherd, once again, in this culture, the shepherd will always lead. Okay, so if, um, yeah, just coming back to the scripture, so broad uh, is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it. Uh, another scripture that uh, I found very interesting is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 6 and 7. It says, my people were a lost sheep. You see, again, this analogy, this imagery of God and his people as shepherd. Their shepherds misled them. The hills led them astray. I found that very interesting. The hills led them astray. They roamed from mount to hill. They forgot their own resting place. All who encountered them devoured them, and their foes said, We shall not be held guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord, the true pasture, the gathering place of their fathers, the Lord. You see how easy it is for sheep to lose their way. How easy it is for us to lose our way when we don't follow the shepherd. 
Okay, let's move on. Um, that is that was verse three. Okay, um, he he restores our soul. He leads us in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. We come to verse four, and we see that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Okay, let's get started. So, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Another translation in Hebrew, it actually means the darkest valley, the deepest night. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Okay, um, I want to show another picture. So, sorry about uh, the picture. It's not the best resolution. This is the picture I could get from this. You know, it says the bibleplaces.com. If you want more biblical pictures, I can go there to find. So, this is what I found. That's the valley, isn't it? Uh, it, it, and most of the valleys are, can be very deep, very deep. Another geographical uh, you know, fact uh, you should know is that Jerusalem is surrounded by three valleys. And one of the most famous valley or well-known valleys is the Kidron Valley. Um, okay. Um, so. Now, when the shepherd took the flock out during the day and when he's coming back, and if it gets dark, when it gets really dark, what happens? That's when the shepherd who is leading comes in between the flock and starts talking. Starts talking, you know, starts talking to the flock. Uh, this Again, this is what I found on the internet, okay? Uh, according to their culture is that the shepherd starts speaking. And what happens is now the flock, the sheep are very anxious now because it's very dark. The valleys can get very dark, very, very, very scarily dark, right? Um, so the shepherd comes in the midst of the flock and then he starts talking or singing. So what happens is the sheep are closer. So if this is the shepherd, the mic, uh, you know, the, the flock surround the shepherd. And they just go wherever the shepherd's voice leads, wherever the shepherd voice goes. Okay, that's, um, you know, that's, that's the beauty that, you know, that in the way that they kind of lead their flock in when they're going through uh, the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And then goes on to say, for your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Okay, uh, now there's a huge debate between a rod and staff it can be a one thing or it can be a two things. Uh, but in most of uh, what I've come across, they say it's two different things in their culture. Um, a staff is used to guide, you know, you've seen a shepherd staff, you know, that has like a famous curve, you know, and then that was used to guide the sheep. The rod was like a, like a baseball bat. Okay. It was used to protect the flock, you know, to fight off the animals, the lions, uh, you know, the leopards, uh, the, the wolves that, that would attack the flock. Okay. It was used to... Uh, you know, defend the flock. Uh, so David says, you know, the shepherd, uh, as a shepherd, he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Um, I, fo I found very interesting that uh, David did not mention another uh, uh, other weapon is the sling. Okay, maybe it did not rhyme well in the psalm, but uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Another interesting, uh, you know, scripture that I found in Leviticus 27, 32 was that regarding the rod, this is what it says, right? And concerning the tithe of the herd of the flock, whatever passes under the rod, one tenth shall be holy to the Lord. Uh, so after after the shepherd had taken the flock, uh, you know, to graze in the pastures, and when he brings them back into their pen, he starts counting them with their rod to make sure that the count is safe, right? Uh, so whatever passes under his rod was his. Okay, uh, that was. Uh, found something very interesting. Uh, I wanted us to read 1 Samuel 17, 32 to 48, but because of time, I'm not going to do that. Uh, it's the famous Sunday school story ever, with David and Goliath. But I want you to go and read uh, very carefully. Um, when David comes to Paul, uh, Saul, sorry, and he says, I will go and fight that giant. And, it's, and we, we all know what the story is. Uh, you know, Saul says, you're just a boy. And David says, when a lion or a bear attacked my flock, 
And I was the keeper of my father's flock. That's what he says, right? Uh, I went after it and I saved the prey. When the lion took my prey, I went after it. I struck it, okay? Now, he either struck with the rod or with the sling. We don't know. Uh, but that's what, it, that's what it says. Uh, another thing the shepherds used to use to guide the flock. Now, when, when they were resting, when the, ship, when the flock is resting in the wilderness, uh, you know, if the flock w is kind of wandering away, the shepherds are used to throwing stones. As in not at the flock, they will throw a stone at a rock. And that sound would alarm, uh, you know, uh, the, the sheep uh, from going astray. So they will keep throwing stones. They are used to throwing stones, uh, you know. And, and that's what, again, David says, uh, you know, when you read 1 Samuel 17, 32 to 48, it says that David struck Goliath. And, you know, it doesn't, it, you know, it uses the word for slingshot. Uh, it was a very powerful thing. And I found this uh, amazing verse in Judges 20, 16. It says, among all his people, all these people were 700 select men, soldiers. This is talking in the context of the military soldiers who were left-handed. Everyone could sling a stone at a hair's breadth and not miss. So these shepherds were very, very good at slinging rocks okay uh, dangerously good uh, and we see that in david uh, david's life okay so let's move on guys so that's uh, even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death we will fear no evil for you are with me for your rod and your staff they comfort me and then we go to verse 5 and we see that he is not only protecting us but he is also hosting us you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies now, again, uh, I keep saying this, but in their culture, the Bedouins, Bedouins uh, are a nomadic uh, tribe, you know, that moved from one place to another. Um, they were also shepherds. They, was, they would pitch their tent. Uh, and if you got invited into their tent uh, to have a meal with them, I mean, like most cultures, uh, you know, food was a huge thing. It is a huge thing, isn't it? Uh, now, it was so huge a deal that if you had a meal with, with a family, it would even become a gossip. Like, what? You, you know, that person hosted you? You ate at that person's house? That You sat at their table? And we see that happening in the Gospels as well between Jesus and Zacchaeus, isn't it? When Jesus goes and sits with uh, Zacchaeus and eats, everybody is gossiping. He's like, why is he eating with them? Because so having sharing a meal on a table in their culture was huge. It 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 was like the highest honor a host could give, you know, um, the guest, the highest guest of honor, and not just that. And we see here that God is not only pro protecting, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving us security, but then He's hosting us. And then obviously, again, why He says, "You anoint my head," you know, before you enter their tent. And like you've been in the wilderness, you are dirty, you wash your feet, you wash your hands, and then they give you this beautiful fragrant oil before you enter the tent. So you're clean, you know. And we see that here God anoints. You're, you're, not, you're not anointing yourself. You're not pouring oil over yourself to, you know, uh, you know cleanse yourself uh, or to make yourself smell good. But then here he says, he anoints us. The host is anointing the guest. Uh, I love this quote that says, uh, you know, peace is not the absence of trouble. Outside the tent, the wilderness is still there. God is protecting us with his staff, with his rod, with his sling. Um, at the same time, he is also hosting us in the presence of our enemies, isn't it? The peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of God. I like that quote. Um, yeah. And finally, we come to verse 6. You see, surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What I found very interesting is from verse 1 to 3, we see that the shepherd is leading. He goes before us. He is in the future. He is, a, he is a, ahead of us. 
in verse 4 we see that the shepherd is with us in the darkest valleys even though i walk you are i will fear no evil why because you are with me and we saw that you know in the narrative that i gave that the shepherd is in the midst of the flock he is with the flock he is present with us in our deepest and our darkest valleys in verse 6 surely goodness and mercy shall follow that means he is also behind us he's chasing us with his goodness and mercy and only god can do that isn't it he is before us pulling us towards our destiny he is with us to encourage us and he is behind us pushing us towards our destiny isn't that amazing and that is our good shepherd and so i want to end with this john 10 and john chapter 10 um was that you know 14 you can read the whole chapter it says my sheep hear me and know my voice i want to just quickly go back to verse 1 the lord is my shepherd he leads us and there are a lot of things in this world that wants to lead us there are a lot of voices out there that is leading you you know what that voice is and that all those voices want to lead you astray the question is are you listening to the voice of the good shepherd and when you listen and follow the good shepherd we get provision we get rest we get peace we get restoration we have guidance we have protection we have comfort we have satisfaction we are anointed we have abundance we have confidence and there is a sense of union I just want to stop here for a minute and I want to uh you know just play this video um for okay this is a video of uh where we'll, we'll just see it okay okay uh just to give a context there are uh, a lot of people trying to call the flock okay this here it is all these people are trying to call the sheep <laughs> sorry guys i my bad i did something uh, sorry 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 Look at them, look at them. They are coming. Oh my god. 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 I just want us to just take this time um JP if you could just lead us in that chorus uh, shepherd of my soul uh young people I I want to encourage us all um right now uh, there are like as I was saying there are a lot of voices in this world that wants to lead us that wants your attention uh but whose voice are you listening to will you let Jesus be your good shepherd because he is he will lead you he will lead you um so as we just take this time to just sing the song uh you know just just worship and just surrender once again if you can do that jp <laughs> shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead 
surrender right now Jesus we want to surrender our lives our anxiety our anxious thoughts our worries about tomorrow our, our worries about provision our worries about our needs father you say that a sparrow doesn't fall to the ground without your permission aren't you more precious than a sparrow and so father with everything that is going on in this world, with so many things, false shepherds that want to lead us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help us to fix our gaze and our ears on you so that we may hear your voice and follow you as you lead us, God. And Father, we also believe that you are with us in our deepest and our darkest valleys, God. And that you also chase us down like a lion with your goodness and your mercy, Father. It's not because we deserve, it's who you are. And so we want to just pause. We want to rest. We want to lie down. We want to rest under the shadow of the Most High. And we surrender our lives. Com take complete control. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for uh, taking this time. Sorry, I think this is the longest I've spoken in this session. <laughs> um, 